I think how easily it is on a slippery sidewalk to slip and bust a hip or a leg. I think of all the eventualities that could come our way sobering. One of the people who attended our church in the last two weeks has been arrested. Is already halfway across the country in jail. Could be you, could be you. Taxes are coming, taxes are coming. Can you pay this year? All sorts of pressure. Who's going to go through this with us? Who's going to be our mainstay, our hope, our help? The Bible says there is hope. Psalm 125, verse 1 says, They who trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. Verse 2. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people. From henceforth, and even like a straight line, even forever. Start, dot, 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 straight line, hooray, on forever. Think about that. Think about eternity. This, our God, working in our lives today, but we have a relationship with Him and His presence with us from the beginning of that dot, 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 dot of our own ray until the very end, until the sun's light work, all the way into and through and beyond eternity. This is the God we can have hope in. And as the mountains are around this great city of Jerusalem, protecting it, making it to have a distinctive flavor, even by the atmosphere from air currents and the heat of that area of the world, we think of Mount Zion, one of the major mountains of Jerusalem, even as they are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people, you and I. From henceforth, from today, and even forever. Look at the last verse. Verse 5 concludes. But peace shall be upon Israel. In many ways, yes, there is a distinctiveness between Israel and the church. But we are God's people today, no question. Even as this written no doubt about a thousand years before Jesus Christ was applicable to his people then, so applicable to us today. Peace shall be upon Israel, God's people. Peace will be our blessing. Peace is our hope, our privilege, our joy. Great God Almighty, he is the insurer of our peace, our hope. What does it say in Corinthians? Faith. It says hope. It says charity. It says, yes, the greatest of these is charity and love. But faith, it's from Him. Love, it's from Him. Hope, it's from Him. It is from Him. He is the source of it all. And listen, this is a world to tear apart our confidence. But when we have this Savior, this Lord, this God, confidence is one of the products, one of the joys of our being a Christian, of our hope. Number four, it exists and continues on as reality despite us. You know, you and I might not be living as though we have hope or reason to hope, but the Bible makes very clear that whether we are living it or not, or testimonies to it or not, it is available and hope is real. And we better get our act together. When our lives are testimonies to the opposite, that our, our lives are testimony to seeming hopelessness or faithlessness, that is a shame to the testimony of the Lord. And my friends, we have every reason to trust Him, every reason to have confidence in Him. And when we do not, we are ashamed in our testimony. When our marriage is not what it ought to be before the world, and people know we're Christians. We are ashamed of the testimony of Christ. But it is mercy, praise God. Think about this. Like that bumper sticker we talked about last week. If God says it, God bless it. How's it going? God says it, I believe it, and that settles it. You know, for my own personal life, there's only going to be real joy 
as long as I accept it. But you know, the truth is, whether I accept it or not, truth is truth. And these things regarding our God are true, despite the fact that sometimes, on occasion, I betray that message, and I'm not true to that message, and the world looks at me, and the message is not clear in my life concerning that message. But the truth is still there, momentarily, I hope. There's just that quick blip of my sin, because I'm still a sinner. But the truth is, there's a great God who has such love for us. A God who has such desire for us, and has made such provision for us, including hope. Oh, we should have confidence, and we should realize that it is true, it is true, it is true, whether we believe it or not. And finally, think about how that hope is a gift to us, with other hopes from God at our death. I'm a lover of Pilgrim's Progress. In my devotions, I read three different versions of it. There's an adult version that's longish. There's a, a, ver a version I have that's called the one-syllable Pilgrim's Progress. Supposedly, there's not a word above a, a one-syllable word in the whole book. Liars! But then there's this, who makes no statement like that. But, it is a very short version of Pilgrim's Progress. Let me read to you at the end. The characters are a man named Christian and a man named Hopeful. And there's some angels. Finally, the shining one said, You have but two more difficulties, and you are in the city. Come with us. Between them and the celestial gate was a river. There was no bridge. Is the river deep? asked Christian. You will find it deeper or shallower as you believe in the king of the city, was the answer. The pilgrims entered the water. Christian began to sink. The water's going over my head! Be of good cheer, brother, said Hopeful. I feel the bottom. It is good. The sorrows of death have me, my friend. I shall not see the land that flows with milk and honey. Darkness and horror held Christian. He saw hobgoblins and, and evil spirits. He was consumed with fear of death. Half dead, he felt himself being pulled upward by, by Hopeful. Brother, I see the gate, encouraged Hopeful. You were always Hopeful. For my sins, he has brought me into this trap and left me. You have quite forgotten the Bible, said Hopeful. The wicked have no struggles at their death. They are free from burdens carried by good men. The troubles that you have in these waters are no sign that God has forsaken you, but are sent to test you. Will you call to mind his goodness that you received before today? Be of good cheer. Jesus Christ will make you whole. Oh, I, I see him now, cried Christian. And after that, the hobgoblins and evil spirits were as silent as stones. He felt the bottom of the river. The river was shallow. When they reached the far bank of the river, they were met by two shining ones, angels. And they said, We are ministering spirits, sent forth to those who shall be heirs of salvation. But I like that soon. Because every one of us, unless, unless the Lord come back before, every one of us will pass over this same river. And will, many of us, I'm afraid, will not have a hopeful beside us. We need fellowship. We need love. Christians who love us beside us. But entering those waters, there's that terror. Not a one of us doesn't have some extra respect for this thing called death. And maybe a little fear because we've never experienced it. But here is a great and wonderful God who's made such promises and brought us this far on our pilgrimage. And He is faithful. He is faithful. An encouraging word from a brother or from a sister, and we take another step, and we find indeed it is shallow. Our heads will not go under. We will be able to cross. Please know that a great part of the joy of having hope in this God is that we have hope for heaven, that God will indeed bring us home. I sink! I sink! No. The water 
shallow. The comradeship in the water is marvelous and true. It's our brothers and sisters. And it's the power of God. You see, it's the promise of God. Every step in our pilgrimage, do we go on one step at a time? Do we keep on going? It is our faith, our trust in our God. Question today, is your faith and trust in this God? Don't accept any other suggestion or alternative or other, any other highway or byway. The way may be well narrow, but oh, it's the rich way, it's the right way, it's the abundant way, it's the way that leads past the cross, it's the way of God's blessing, it's the way that will lead to heaven. And hope, a big part of hope is this. This is all a marvelous gift of God for us to reassure us, to comfort us, to guide us as we go to glory. Bunyan calls it the celestial city. We call it perhaps heaven today, or the new Jerusalem, the new heaven. Hey, God's promises are true. He can be trusted. And 125 verse 5, peace shall be upon Israel. Peace shall be upon his people. Now there's a wonderful verse in Isaiah that we read when we dedicate a baby. I love to hold a baby and to pray on your behalf and for the parents' behalf and godparents. And pray God's blessing. Let me use that verse. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. What a wonderful thing. A believer can trust simply in his God and know the promise of being true. All will be well. There will be peace. There will always be hope because the where God's heir, the one who can be trusted, is God Almighty Himself. Do you trust this one today? That's, that's really what I'm asking. Is your trust and your faith and your hope in Him as it ought to be? Please, O oh God, minister to our hearts and help us to have a happy reminder here from your word of just how great is your provision. Why, Lord, we are not a, a, a great raw material. We are not great, Lord, even in our own honest self-study. But you are marvelous to love mankind in general and we in this room particularly. Oh, compared to somebody in this room, our chances to hear Jesus, our chances to hear the good news, then your love for us, so many of us individually, is there reason to hope? Is there reason to enjoy? Is there reason to share? Oh, there is. Marvelous God, receive our worship. You have blessed us so wonderfully so specially, that we should have promise of heaven, that we should have the assurance of your presence every day, that we should have the hope of your calling, that we should feel and know ourselves to be secure in your family as your children. Oh God, to have brothers and sisters such as these in this room today. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory be to the Father. Glory be to the Holy Ghost. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.